In this video, we will show you our first time to a Formula 1 race. We will show you what's inside the circuit, our experience from the main grandstand, and the overall money we spent. Let's get right to it. Landing. We flew from Manchester to Barcelona, which costed us £361 for the both of us. We then rented a car for £434, bear in mind insurance and parking. We stayed at ZT Hotel, which was £1,500 for the two of us. We had a quick stop at the Burger King, and it was an early night for the weekend ahead. Day 1, and it's practice day. We were so excited to be there for the first time and on our way there, there was Yuki Snowder from Alpha Tower. We were so pumped up at this point, thinking we are going to get those action on the weekend. We got to the entrance and we got through with ease, I mean there was barely anybody in the queue. As you go in, you are greeted with loads of F1 stores and as you go into the main grandstand, you will be overwhelmed with many activities. You'll see the fan zone stage where you get to see the drivers having an interview, more merchandise stores where you can shop for your favourite team, the infamous pit stop challenge and many more. Here is a trophy for the weekend, here is a Formula E car which is absolutely gorgeous and here is a man appearing on the national TV. Since we were there we thought we'd have a look at the general admission and honestly it's not that bad. Now, for the main grandstand. <laughs> for this, we paid just over a thousand pounds for the two of us. With this, you get to be in front of the garages where you can see the pit stop practices, the race start, and the celebration in the end. A thousand pounds for a weekend is a lot of money. So this begs the question, is it worth it? My face definitely thinks so. We was overly stimulated on the first day, so we just had a quick paella and pasta in town and went home to a couple of beers and enjoyed a bit of Spanish TV. Day 2 and it's qualifying. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning, it's so busy. We're about to see Ferrari, Leclerc, Sainz. The home race I think is special for any drivers on the grid. Yeah, Carlos needs to, to enjoy it. And, uh... Significantly more busy, yeah. We came in 10 o'clock, it's packed full already. And so, car park full. Yeah, car park was full as well. We're gonna watch the sprint race for every. And then we're gonna see Hamilton and Red Bull. How are you all doing? Woo! Suit from somebody because we couldn't afford our own suits. Oh. So I knew I had to give the suit back. And I quite like the suit. Today might be a, a challenge, but tomorrow it's gonna be a fun day, I reckon. They're saying they couldn't compete, they can't compete with Red Bull, and Yeah, which is fair enough, it's quite humble, it. really honest. Oh, they're saying lovely. Really genuine guys. Really actually. genuine. Really nice. Nice. Yeah. added a nice little thing to the day as well. Like... So hot, they're so very hot. It's so warm. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see Red Bull, but we managed to get ourselves a Red Bull drink for £10 with a cup and a very good cheeseburger for also £10. And we got ourselves a very expensive piece of kit as well. 25 euros down, 50 euros together. But they need it. But it's definitely needed. Your ears will be ringing if you don't wear them. But we was cheeky, we asked the guy whether we can access the commentator on the radio and he, he said, oh, yeah. yeah, there is. So if you go on the Spanish radio and type in 98 frequency, it would be in English, so. Here we are, enjoying the qualifying, keeping our eardrums intact. Unfortunately, the radio didn't work, but we used BBC Radio 5 with about 15 seconds delay, and it does the job. There's an English commentator on the speaker, however, it was only for about 50% of the time. Overall, it was a good wet day, the atmosphere was a lot more intense, and the result for Verstappen, Lando Norris, Alonso, who finishes at the podium. Day 3, and it's race day. It's just been chaos, trying to park. It took us two hours to get in. from Barcelona to the circuit. And this is the earliest we set off today. Yeah, two hours. But it's the last day. We're gonna have fun. As you can see, it's a gridlock by the entrance. The atmosphere is a lot more serious and it's kicking on right in the Whilst everyone's going towards their seats, I thought I'd have a go at the pit stop challenge. I've got to give my hands up to the pit stop crew. It's definitely not as easy as it looks. The best score we got was 5.5 seconds with two Ferrari fans. 
We then got to our seats to watch F3 and it's a result for these Spaniards. This is Formula 2. F2 are also lightning fast with only about 15 seconds behind the F1 cars in this race. Here's the driver's parade two hours before the race. Although the TV does a very good job in the build-up and has an advantage with the data they show, there is some glaringly obvious reason why it's come to the race. It doesn't convey it on the TV, like the excitement that was like the whole of the pre-race, yeah. And the cars are a thing of beauty. Here is Hamilton skipping the queue to fourth place, Checo getting in his car, and before you know it, it's race time. After a lap, Verstappen is leading as with the theme of the year and he went on to win with about 20 seconds lead. 20 seconds is a long time which we sometimes miss on the TV. It was something we will never forget. We have spent an overall £3,500 for the both of us and it was worth every penny. It was good to be a part of something, a culture, and this is the main reason why we travel towards Venice. It was a win for Verstappen, a good win for Mercedes, having 2-3 Hamilton and Russell. Would we go again? Don't forget to subscribe to find out. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below and we will answer every single question you have. See you again. You need to do it at least once in your life. We can't believe it also. <laughs> Two Mercedes podiums. <laughs> it's amazing. It's a win-win.